I, I think, you know, I, not to be a Cassandra or use hyperbole, I think yeah, it could be probably the odds are very high for the biggest crash we've ever seen in stock market history. And that's just a setup that I see. First of all, you had the fiscal cliff that I've talked about immensely. I talked about it all last year and it's here. So you've gone from $6 trillion in helicopter money, almost all of it printed by the Federal Reserve, handed out to people. It's gone from $6 trillion to zero. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, so you already have the economy slowing precipitously because of that fiscal cliff. Then into that, you have inflation at a 40-year high. You have interest rates that are spiking not only here, but across the globe. And look at BTB uh, spreads to German spreads. So Italian 10-year notes to German 10-year notes. I mean, they're just I mean, it's skyrocketing by, by you know, 10 basis points per diem. Uh, this is unheard of for an Italian 10-year that, you know, was below 1%. Mm -hmm. And a German 10-year, it was negative. The, the rates are soaring all over the globe. And then on top of that, you, have a, you had a massive inventory build in Q4, which has to be drawn down, which when you draw down inventory, it takes away from consumption. So it's a net negative GDP growth. So, so what I'm saying is the fiscal cliff, inventory build, highest inflation in 40 years, uh, spiking interest rates are all adding to a trenchant drop in GDP growth. So we're going to go from 5.5% GDP growth for all of 21 to Q1 on a seasonally adjusted annualized rate, zero goose egg. That's a pretty big drop. And then you have earnings growth, which is going to go from 45% in 2021 to low single digits. Now, on top of all that, gentlemen, you have a monetary cliff coming. And on a rate of change basis, that monetary cliff will be the biggest cliff we have ever seen. Yeah. So we're going from, to be specific, $120 billion a month of QE towards the end of 2021 to zero. No new money added to the base money supply and to the Fed's balance sheet by the first week in March of this year. Then we'll also have in March our first rate hike. You'll have another one in May and another one in June. So you think about our Fed funds rate at 75 basis by June. And people will say, well, you know, well, the Fed's funds rate used to be, you know, 20. <laughs> no, they don't understand calculus. They don't understand rate of change. It's the rate of change, not, not the actual level. It's how fast you're going from where you were from that base. So, so if, you know, if inflation was at one time 15%, but now it's only seven, people say, oh, it's still half where it was. No. Inflation used to be almost zero, and now it's seven. It's the rate of change that matters. And on top of everything I just said, with that monetary cliff with the ending of QE and then going into um, rate hikes, the most pernicious part of this is the quantitative tightening. I, I believe Mr. Powell and the FOMC will start quantitative tightening, tightening sometime around June, and it'll be around $100 billion per month. So it's 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 watch out for what happens later this year. later in Q2 is where I see the most salient portion of this decline and on. Of course, the Fed's going to pivot. Of, of course, the Fed can't, you know, prosecute and and uh, end its goal. of I think they're talking about, you know, two and a half, three percent on the Fed funds rate or even higher. It's a, you know, seven rate hikes this year. Of course, everything's going to break on the way there. As an active money manager, it's my responsibility not to be there when it breaks. So I don't want to be net long arc investments, you know, you know, stocks that have no earnings or very little revenue and just promises of the future. Um, so when you go into a dramatic slowdown in earnings and GDP growth, you one thing you cannot have is you cannot have all your investments in speculative stocks, high volatile stocks. So that's part of my model. I have a five point model spectrum between de deflation and recession and stagflation and attractability. So you have to know where to invest. One thing you can't do is have all your money in that, you know, speculative bucket. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, if you, if you're smart about this, you could say to yourself, listen, I want to pare back on my exposure to the market. I want to buy low volatility investments. I want to have some hedges in place. I want to have lots of cash this way. When the market does crap out and it will, then you have all your liquidity. You can actually be even making money while this happens. And it's, it's really very predictable. I have a 20 point model. It'll let me know when high yield starts to break, when the credit market starts. To break. This is what will bring the Fed back into the dovishness side of the ledger. I mean, I call him Powell the pivoter because it's exactly what he is. Remember, remember, inflation is transitory. Oh, no, it's not. And then it is, it, you know, he goes back and forth depending on the, you know, 
QT is like watching paint dry. Oh, no, no, it isn't. Let's, let's just start lowering interest rates. He was lowering interest rates three times before COVID. We're going to have an inflation print on Thursday, which could be 7.5%. Yeah. And that, that's a 40-year high in inflation. You can't pivot because somebody in the private equity business says, hey, Jerome, we're losing some money. No, you have you have an you have an uh, an obligation now, which comes from Joe Biden and the Democrats. You have an obligation to defend the purchasing power of the middle class. And by the way, speaking as a libertarian, he absolutely should do that. Now, of course, his primary mandate is to make sure banks are solvent and that the markets function freely. So when the credit markets freeze and when the stock market craps out 30 percent plus, then, of course, he will acquiesce. But I don't want any part of that in my portfolio. When we, re- when we reach a liquidity event, everything gets dumped except for treasuries and cash and U.S. dollar. We're not, we're not there yet. So, I, so what I, why I increase gold right now is because I believe we have reached a maximum bearishness as far as interest rates on the Fed funds rate can go. So the Fed funds futures market is pricing in five to six rate hikes. I don't think they get to three before the whole thing implodes. So I think the... I think Powell moves, like I said, in March, May, and then the balance sheet is going to do the preponderance of the damage, which I think flattens the yield curve, causes another recession and a stock market crash. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.